just wanted to show you these parts that we've been turning up. And this is ENA steel. Uh, I think it was 30 mil diameter, roughly. 33 diameter there. And we turned this profile using the Hyundai Hit um, 15 lathe. My landlord's one next door just to make them quicker for me. I've got my lathe now that you're gonna see a video of, or you would have already seen a video of, which is a Hyundai Quick Turn 15 we've just bought. We're just in the process of getting that commissioned. So here's the profile part we turned on the lathe. Now, these ends need threading, M14 by 1.5, and the thread goes 20 mil deep, and then there's a relief there, which I bored on the XYZ Pro Turn as a second op, just clamped it there with a stop, and just bored that rather than doing another op in the other lathe. Now, although this um, relief diameter is not critical, I'm just kind of getting in the habit of making everything as exact as I can. So there's a 16.5 mil gauge pin. You might be able to read that. And then you see it goes in there up to that shoulder. And then when we were doing the tap size, the drill tap size for the ready for the thread. It's a 12.5 mil gauge pin. If you can read that, and then that goes all the way through there. So that's ready to be threaded. You can see these ones here have been done already. Now the threading process could have also been done on the other lathe, but because we hadn't put this relief in, because um, we didn't have a tool to back bore it when we chucked it and hold everything here. We did that afterwards and we thought threading wise, we'll just use a tap in the tail stock in the XYZ and we'll tap it that way. So here's our go no go gauge, which is M14 by 1.5. And I'll just show you these ones that are already done. Because sometimes you don't get a good finish with a tap. And I also haven't got a threading tool small enough for this ID. So there's your go. If we turn this round, see our no-go goes in about one turn, which is exactly as it should be. So there's six of them, and I've got to do these six on a left-hand thread. They're exactly the same. They've just got to be threaded with a left-handed tap. But I'm just going to show you doing this one in the lathe here. Now, I need to get some new jaws for this because these have had a couple of crashes. This had one crash when I first got it. Um, that took a hefty nick out of one of the jaws. So this isn't the truest running chuck. So I tend not to do, if I'm doing anything really quick, cool, don't take it out and it's fine. But when you're putting it in one machine and then putting it into this machine, you need to just make sure you're running true because if not when you're tapping from the tail stock you're going to snap the tap or end up with a really bad thread now there's a 12.5 gauge pin and all i'm using this for on the slowest speed is i just want to have a look and see if that's noticeably running out because if it isn't noticeably running out then it's not going to make a difference so i pull the gauge pin out and then we're going to turn on our tool, hopefully not splash the camera. And then we've got our tail stock undone. I'm just going to run up to it and get it started there. You could use some oil on this as well, but I tend to try and avoid it. This is a soft enough material that it cuts fine without the oil, because if not you end up with a complete mixture of oil in your coolant as well and it doesn't last as long. So now we'll stop it there, put it in reverse and let it back itself out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of backward pressure on the tail stop so that once it's free of the threads, it'll come away like so. Let's turn our coolant off. Clean them 
And I know this is already going to fit, and as long as you've got good alignment with your tail stock, you'll end up with a, a nice fit with absolute minimal amount of play. Probably can't even see that, but that's a good thread. Now, none of these gauges are calibrated, I just buy these second hand as and when I need them because I don't actually have one for the left-handed thread. And I don't really want to order a new one because it's about 85 pound and the parts aren't worth that much. So I don't want to buy it yet unless I have to do a lot of them. Um, but if one comes up cheap second hand, I'll get it. It's always good to have them in your arsenal of parts. So we're now take that out. Off. And then there you have it. That's got a really nice thread in there. It's quick, it's simple. So we've got six of the right handed for the customer, and then I keep one as a master in case they need to come back and order some more and then i've got a drawing for it for all these sort of things which i'm going to show you now i'll show you my drawing that we've done using fusion 360. and there it is for the adjuster with all our dimensions. Now we've got a Miller hexagon on this and I wanted to use the indexer. So I could have bought this in hex bar straight from the off, but I wanted to mill it. So there's your cross section showing your depth of thread, 26 mil of thread, 20 mil relief on the back. And there you have it. Now this job also has these stainless steel spacers that were part of it. Let's just help out there. Now these are for rose joints, I believe, and we had to do 20 of them, and the tolerance required on these parts were plus minus 0 0.025, so one thousandth was the tolerance on this, and we hit that pretty much spot on on all of them. It wasn't too much of an issue, just got to check, tweak, check and tweak till we got it right. So yeah, there you have it. Just thought I'd show you them. A little update on the job, and then I'll add on to this video in a minute, milling the hex on the EN8 parts. See you soon. Right, we're back on to show you milling the hex on these fittings. Um, I used a couple of my practice scrap ones. These were made on the lathe, but a couple of bits were undersized when we were setting it up. So, getting a few burrs back here and to try and keep the rigidity we're using the face mill now I'm no expert on feeds and speeds and and that side of things I'm just I play each part do a couple of spares and go from there um, we done one and then just linished it off and it looks nice there's no thread in this one because we didn't bother because he's undersized but this one just ever so slightly kissed the OD on that part there so on that shoulder so we've just took that up a little bit so we're in the in indexer so we set 60 degree intervals we've got a two inch four tip face mill in there coolant going we're at 500 rpm and i'll show you our program so what we're going to do is the first event is a milling event so it's going to start off around here and it's going to mill straight across the top then it's going to retract go back above zero and then back down to zero um, after the first mill sorry so yeah it'll come across lift up this will index it'll go back down and go again and it'll do that a total of six times to put the hexagon on the part so there's all our info so milling event position event position event 
position that takes you back to zero, absolute zero. And then you mill again. And we've got the commands in the auxiliary commands to turn off and on the coolant, turn it off at the beginning of the entire program and turn it off at the finish. And then obviously an index after every milling event. So let's go again. So we're gonna hit run. It's gonna tell us to start, turn the spindle off. We can leave the coolant off. You don't have to have that in any permission because it's position, sorry, because it's gonna do it itself. And then it says press go. Now that's taken to me. My home position was set again, so I can get to this, take one part out, put the next one in. So this now is one of the actual parts. So load tool, diameter 12 mil. The diameter's are relevant, so I didn't put it in there. And then press go. So that's taken the first mill position, turn the indexer back down for the second cut. I did try doing this with a normal end mill, but I've got a better surface finish with this face mill, although you can hear the tips running on the back edge once it's done its pass. So it's cutting on the back side as well, which meaning the head or the table is not perfectly true, but it's irrelevant to me. All right, I'll show you when all six sides are done. Right, brought you back in to show you these parts that are done. And you can see there the hexes, they're milled onto the part, so that is the part complete. So, started off as round bar. Now we turn this down on the CNC lathe, counterboard the back just for clearance of the thread. Now we've done a tap drill size and then we used a tap, run a tap through these on the lathe and then obviously milled the hex on, on the mini machine using the Hass indexer. And then we just linished it or deburred it, shall I say, using a Scotch Bright 3M Scotch Bright mop on the spindle polisher. Gives it a nice clean finish, no burrs, just looks nice looking part now. That's ready for them to weld in. And then that's exactly the same. So this one's left handed, that one's right handed, and they wanted six of each of these, so they're complete. And then the other part of this order for the customer was these small spacers, and they're 303 stainless and they wanted a one thou tolerance on these so 0.025 millimeters they had to have on these and they sit e either side they go into a rose joint like so and then they have a 12 mil bolt which will go through so we've got 20 of them and they're all done so yeah that's the order complete cheers for watching